Does Earth have a dark side, like the moon? Was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles based on a true story? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life! Yo, and welcome back to This Paranormal Life, a comedy podcast where every Tuesday we investigate a different claim or case and come to a decision within the hour whether it's truly paranormal or not. As always, you're joined by myself, Mr. Kick Mulvana, this guy across from me, Mr. Roy Powers. How are you doing today, Roy? I'm doing great. We are recording kind of in the middle of a huge thunderstorm, uh, and there have been crashes occasionally. So who knows? Maybe we won't even have to do any sound effects this week. If we just wait for the right timing, we could get a thunder crash right when we need it. Slightly um, worrying that we do record on the 75th floor of the Shard. Right, right, right. We're... We're prone to thunder strikes. So if you hear some of those, um, you'll know where they're coming from. Rory, today's story is worryingly close to home. Are you ready to dive in? Well, yeah, well, how close is it? It's 1983 on a dark and misty day in South Moulton, Devon. Local farmer Eric Lay is off to feed his sheep. Walking over the moors, he realizes that there's a commotion amongst some of his animals. They're pacing around in the mist. They seem agitated, making a lot of noise. Which is worrying because, as Rory explained in a recent episode, the animals are always the the first first to know. know. Calm down, girls. What's going on? As he walks into the crowd of ewes, they all scatter to make room for him. All except one. On the ground, he sees a large shape, and it takes him a minute to realize it's also one of his sheep. It's been torn apart, limb from limb, its throat ripped out. Whoa! Jesus Christ, what's happened here? He looks up for signs of a perpetrator, maybe a fox running into the distance. But now the crowd has cleared, his heart sinks, because there isn't just one dead sheep in his field, but ten, maybe twelve carcasses torn apart, as far as he can see. Oh my god, there was a massacre! This is the bit in the horror movie where he looks down. He's got paws covered in blood. (laughs) He looks in a puddle at his reflection. He's a wolf, screaming, waking up from a nightmare. But sadly for Eric, there was no waking up from this nightmare. This was very real. He visited some of his neighbors, telling them to keep an eye out, suspiciously looking at their dogs for sign of a serial killer mentality. But they all quietly accepted that this was almost certainly a fox or stray dog. Sure, this thing killed a lot more than usual, but attacks on livestock were pretty common. But when people say this kind of thing happens all the time, they don't usually mean it will happen again immediately and to the same person. When Eric went to sleep that night, he looked out into his fields, sheep staring back at him. He could practically hear them saying, Bro, don't do this to us. We need some security out here, a bodyguard sheep or something. Even some basic self-defense training. Last night we were bleeding and bleeding and you never came to help. But alas, men and beasts were not destined to communicate with each other. So he drew the curtains and went to sleep. You can kind of see where this is going, Rory. He's asking for it at this point. When Eric woke up and walked out into his field the next day, even more sheep had been killed, torn apart limb from limb by some kind of beast. Eric, you have only yourself to blame, my friend. Get a f***ing ring camera. See what's doing this. (laughs) Even in the the, uh, the story with the three little piggies, even they had even they had a straw house (laughs) to defend them when the wolf came. At least they got a heads up. Eric won't even let them have a straw house. He's just like, fend for yourselves, (laughs) boys. That's right. He could have at least put up like a shotgun tied to a piece of cheese in front of it or something (laughs) that if the beast took the cheese, it might get blasted. If I was a farmer and this sort of thing happened to me, I am stuffing my trousers with hay, stuffing my shirt with hay, and I'm posing midnight like a scarecrow up on a up on a crucifix just waiting for someone to come down. And as soon as that thing comes down, I'm launching myself at it and wrestling it to the ground. What That's how I know I'd be a good farmer. What if it's actually quite a big beast, though? Mm. You, you have to stay as a scarecrow <laughs> all night. Your arms are getting sore as shit. <laughs> I'm sweating bullets over here. <laughs> this 12-foot werewolf is like, 
<laughs> Did that scarecrow just <laughs> fart? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Can they do that? No, he didn't. You didn't hear anything. <laughs> the sheep are walking over to you, eating the hay out of your trousers. <laughs> F off. Get the, get the out of here. And it didn't stop. Over the next three months, Eric would lose over 100 sheep to this mysterious night predator. And it started affecting his neighbor's farms too. Clearly, this was no ordinary fox. It was much too big, much too powerful, too violent, and too hungry. At the local pub, rumors circulated. I saw a dark creature with red eyes crawling around the fields at night. Maybe it's a Brazilian super fox. I heard its blood-curdling scream under the full moon last night. I heard it has tiny knives called claws on its foot. The townspeople talked and talked about what was going on, yet all they could agree on was calling it the Beast of Exmoor. Ooh, that wouldn't have been a good time for a thunder crash, Mother Nature. We've been sitting here for 45 minutes since Roy <laughs> said that, and we just, we have to press on. Uh, what are you doing in these circumstances, Rory? Um, aside from my scarecrow plan. <laughs> Which is not a bad plan, but we did uh, notice a couple of holes in that idea, maybe. Yeah, yeah, if the animals interfere. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm going to use the wool from the deceased uh, to dress myself up as a sheep. I'll bait myself. I'll be there and I'll like, you know, I don't know what makes sheep hot. I'll put on some like eyeliner and I'll fluff up my fur and stuff and be like, ooh, I hope a big bad wolf doesn't come and snatch me. And then uh, I don't think, as soon as a beast- I don't think I, the beast is looking for these sheep in a sexual nature. And I'd like, you know, push my hooves out and make like mm, kissy noises and stuff. Okay. And, then, and then as soon as the beast comes, it's like, you know, I'd maybe like, you want to commit to it as well. So I'd let it like fucking go at me for like, a couple minutes. I'm sorry, just to you really, gotta really be more specific. Go at be, you, because be you were just talking moment. about being a sexy little sheep. And then, uh, do you and mean then, attack you? Sure, yeah. Um, do whatever it needs to do. Let the business be done. Jesus. And then as soon as it's done, I'm like, ooh, I had such a good time. I think that, yeah! And I pull off my my face, and I've got I like Neo style. I've got two Uzis under my my shepherd's cloak, and uh, and I'll just start blasting, lighting them up. Probably so is how I deal with it. You had the guns all along. You <laughs> chose to wait until the wolf had. To be clear, the wolf me sex yeah, with after you after the wolf me. Yeah. So um, why not just attack the wolf before it it tries to look, fuck you? Don't question my methods. You have to commit. You have to lure him into a false sense of security. So he puts we his guard down. We don't even know it's him or like, I think it's eating the sheep. I don't think it's f***ing the sheep. I think I said they were, quote, torn apart limb from limb. Not like ass to mouth. Okay. No. So your two plans are dress up like a scarecrow yeah. and, and observe the beast before attacking it or dress up like a sheep, get f***ed by the wolf yeah yeah and then attack it yeah i guess i, think, I could probably use the guns i can't believe first. you came up with an idea worse than the scarecrow <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the same idea except you just get fucked. <laughs> i'm gonna dress up as a scarecrow get down on my hands and knees no <laughs> wow so i regret asking what you would do in this situation what would you do then asshole if my ideas suck so hard... Call the authorities! Right. And when they get there, you're like on your hands and knees no, and ready to no. go. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, Mr. <laughs> Sexy Policeman. <laughs> uh, would you like to see a photo believed to be of the beast itself? Yes, I would. Whoa! That is really strange. Starting to regret... <laughs> <laughs> Starting to regret a lot of things. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is a picture taken from quite far away, but they've blown it up, um, so you can, you can see the higher details. I'm kind of struggling to see the scale of this, mm -hmm. because it could be the size of a bear, or it could be the size of a badger. Mm -hmm. There's not really a lot for reference. It kind of looks like a little pony. Oh. Like my little pony. <laughs> okay. You know? Like little, tiny little pony legs, and a little body. Maybe even smaller. 
I, I got to be honest. I think your first take was my first take. To me, it just looks exactly like a bear. But I don't know if they have a lot of bears in this part of the UK, <laughs> to be fair. Spoiler alert. They don't. I mean, this is one aggressive pony. Uh, Yeah. It, yeah, there's not a lot to go on. I, I agree. It is a little hard to get to get the scale. I think we can see. I mean, I think for sure bigger than a badger. Right. But somewhere between uh, wolf and bear, uh, to my eyes. I mean, a lot of the descriptions we had from the townspeople is a beast with glowing red eyes that allegedly ripped out the throats of over 100 sheep. Let it be known, audience members, from that picture, I think if that thing attacked, I could drop kick it into a ditch. All right. Well, you don't know the scale, so I, I think would just I could watch it. Lick it into no, the horizon. You could not. It looks you could tiny. Not. You're going to regret saying that because you're going to actually sound pretty stupid in about two paragraphs. Because <laughs> I definitely haven't yet. Uh, on this paranormal life, we've been in this situation quite a few times, and usually at this point in the story, the town people assemble into a vigilante squad, far more dangerous, by the way, than whatever they think is out there. Dad squad. Someone pretty much always ends up getting hurt. For some reason, instead of turning to the authorities, people always make themselves the authorities. But this is where our story takes a different and sharper turn. Eric's living nightmare situation soon gets back to the agriculture minister aka the upper echelons of British government. I guess even though this seems like a small niche case for someone that important, uh, if this thing gets out of hand, it could become a bigger and bigger problem. Yeah, if it's eating everything, yeah. How long till it gets a taste for children? That's what you need to be scared of. Within the week, the Royal Marines had deployed a unit to the Murrs to track and eliminate the beast. Whoa. Think of this as a 20th century version of Kill the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, but with high-tech commandos. What year did you say this was again? Um, 1983. Oh, wow, that's worryingly recent. Soon, the quiet moors were crawling with British military snipers, watching for <laughs> any movement that wasn't a sheep or a human. But this is where things started to get weird. The snipers started to catch glimpses of the beast. A flash in the corner of their eye, a rustle of a bush in the distance. Through their night vision goggles, it was like hunting f***ing predator. This thing is darting around the field faster than possible for a fox or anything like it. Two marines, Wilson and Andrews, are camped looking over a hill, one with their rifle in hand, the other scanning the moors. Christ, I can't see anything from here. Wilson, can you pass me that 24 by 50 scope? Wilson? When he looks around, Wilson has been reduced to a twisted skeleton. What? His bones licked clean <laughs> by the beast of Exmoor. <laughs> licked clean? He devoured him like a KFC bucket. Inches from his butt. How did he not hear this? Bo just bones. Uh, yeah, I might have sli slightly exaggerated this one for uh, storytelling effect. His bones might not have been licked clean exactly. But the Marines commanding officer was quoted as saying that the beast behaved with extremely high, almost human intelligence and, quote, always moved with surrounding cover amongst hedges and woods. Not only that, but for the split second that one of the snipers did get a clean shot to take, they would miss, hit a rock, and send a .5 caliber bullet ricocheting through the quiet Devon countryside, hitting even more sheep and risking human lives. And by the way, this bullet doesn't stop at one sheep. It keeps going. It's like a game of dominoes. So they went out to kill the monster that was killing all the sheep and accidentally sniped more sheep. Collateral damage, sure. Okay, this seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Maybe you should have got someone who understands the wild, some sort of Steve Irwin style uh, hunter, not just a guy with a massive gun. The situation was a catch-22. You need a damn army to take this thing down, but you can't just unleash an army in the countryside. The only option was to trap the beast, drive this thing into a corner, and put this sick puppy down. 
they haven't tried that many things. <laughs> they tried to snipe it and now they're like, now the only thing we can do is trap it and snipe it from point blank range. Put the barrel in his beast mouth and blow it off like a rail gun. There should have been more people involved in the You think the it went process. too quickly from the local farmer to the UK Marines? <laughs> yeah, I think there should have Sniper been... Sniper division? Step. I feel like the UK Marines were uh, at approaching a budget meeting where they had to justify paying for all of these snipers to be a part of the force. We've got about 12,000 rounds that need <laughs> shot between now and then, and uh, there's we don't have enough wars to uh, fire them off in. We need to create a war in the British countryside. That's a fair accusation, I think. Um, you know, I, I can forgive the logic that, um, you know, they just went from zero to 100 too quick. They wanted sure. to sort this thing as fast as possible, but they just overstepped it by a little bit. But don't worry, the Marines do have other ideas. They made a new plan, code named Operation Beastie. <laughs> Under the cover of night, night vision goggles engaged, they tracked this mysterious blur on the mirrors in an epic game of cat and mouse. It's gone east! Don't let it get away! After hours, finally, they drove it towards an abandoned building and surrounded it. At this point, I'm imagining 50-person SWAT team with machine guns, smoke grenades, the whole thing. Come out with your claws in the air. We have you surrounded. We've got this son of a bitch now. This one's for sheep kind everywhere, you hairy bastard. But when the Marines breached the building, guns ready to take aim and fire, it was gone. Building? The building was completely empty. I thought we were in the woods. They they drove it, it towards an abandoned building and then oh, it, it okay, went inside. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like this beast has a five-star wanted level. <laughs> it crashed its Lambo into the bottom of an abandoned <laughs> warehouse. It's, it's taken hostages. <laughs> the beast has a hostage. He's got a sheep by the neck. Drop, drop your guns or I'll rip his throat out. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get out of here alive. Wait a minute. Eric Lay, the farmer, stay back. I needed to claim the insurance money on, on the sheep. <laughs> something, something so funny about the idea of a, a cryptid being cornered and like bargaining, like an actual hostage situation. Yeah. Like it's on the news and it's just be like, I want I want $200,000 in unmarked bills and a helicopter. It's like, what are you going to do with a helicopter? <laughs> You have claws. You can't fit in a helicopter. I'm also going to need a pilot for the helicopter. <laughs> they give him the pilot. <laughs> he eats him immediately. <laughs> Two pilots. It's true. We don't know what this thing's motives are. They said it had almost human-like intelligence. Maybe this thing, <laughs> maybe this thing is more man than beast. Yeah. They did describe it as being human-like. They said it was like it had slipped out of this dimension entirely. Calling it a night, the Marines leader had no choice but to retreat and give up the hunt. Nothing had worked, and they were creating more danger than security on the mirrors. It's like how they say no modern army has ever conquered Afghanistan, because it's so mountainous and hilly and dangerous to invade. This beast is on home turf, you can't beat it at its own game. Rory, has this ever happened on TPL before? Firstly, that the damn military are sent in to track and hunt a cryptid. And secondly, that they can't do it? Maybe not this, in a case this recent. I feel like back in the days when they would just throw the military at anything, we had it happen. And the reason they couldn't do it is because they had like old timey pirate pistols that took seven days to reload. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure... Uh... Spring Hill Jack showed up at some point in the Civil War and yeah. <laughs> both sides had to like agree to team up and fight against him. Whereas uh, these guys have snipers and night vision goggles. I'm yeah. not too sure if we've ever had a case like that. Maybe <laughs> we have, I don't know. But um, I applaud the military for taking this thing so seriously at the very least. Absolutely. I mean, they said that it, you said that it slipped into another dimension and we kind of moved past that very fast. Uh, was that just their way of saying we couldn't find him in the in the building? You know, it's uh, it's their words, not mine. He didn't like open a Rick and Morty portal and <laughs> jump through and disappear. Wow, into thin I mean, air. I guess that's possible. 
Now that you mention it, well, I think I'm saying I don't think that. it's possible. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, and that probably like was know. what the army meant when they said it. Like maybe he literally jumped dimensions, disappeared. I don't think that's what they were saying. I think maybe they couldn't find him. I don't but... know. I think it's an interesting point. Thanks for bringing it up. Let's explore that. No, let's, let's explore not. That. Let's end that there. I think. What if it's an interdimensional beast? I don't even think you said that word right. <laughs> What if it is an interdimensional beast, really? Is it Papa Normal? It might be. <laughs> you, you shouldn't be hosting anymore if this is... You did just have your second job less than 24 hours ago. That's right. So I should excuse any, uh, any mistakes made today. I haven't slept. And I spent all night <laughs> ass naked trying to hunt a mosquito in my room when I woke up. And Googled it. It turns out England doesn't have mosquitoes. So it probably I dreamt didn't. the whole thing. <laughs> so what I'm saying is it was an interdimensional mosquito. Right. Smart, smart, smart. <laughs> the only logical explanation. It might be. It might be. Uh, I do love the arrogance of the military uh, cornering this beast, breaching the building. And their only explanation for how the beast got away being it slipped out of this dimension. Yeah. Not like it just got away or slipped out or... There's no way they wrote that in the official report. No. There's it... no way you could report that to your higher-ups. That's insane. We tend to believe that it, uh, it's skipped galaxies. <laughs> we, we are not sure. We do not believe the technology exists. How the beast would have got a Stargate. But we believe it jumped galaxies. <laughs> Jenkins, you say everyone jumped galaxies. Not everything can slip in and out of this dimension. You said that when I asked if anyone had seen my packed lunch this <laughs> afternoon. Crumbs around his mouth. I, I believe in me you have traveled interdimensionally to my stomach. I think your BLT now exists in biblical days. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jesus himself is enjoying it on the plains of Bethlehem. All right, no more sniper missions for you. No more sni- wait, who, wait, who gave you that gun? You should not be- you should not have it. It does seem mad that the military couldn't get a good look at this thing. But bearing in mind, I showed you the best photo we have of this beast. Just so you get the picture of this whole thing, here's the second best photo we have of this thing. Oh, wow. When was this taken? This is <laughs> terrible. It seems a damn lot earlier than 1986. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is like an old-timey sepia tone photograph of just, just a dog in a field <laughs> or a boar or something. It's so pixelated that you can't even, you can't see anything. It is possible that this is nothing to do with the Beast of Exmoor. Yeah, the audacity to see that and be like, that's it. It might be a cat in a garden, to be honest. But I'm not going to leave you hanging. There is a video believed to be of the beast. We really shouldn't be calling this thing a beast. We've, we've investigated beasts before in this podcast, and they are 12 foot, standing on their hind legs, claws as sharp as a velociraptor. Uh-huh. That's a badger, my friend. That... This thing is tiny. I'm going to ask you to watch it again. I know that a part... Well, we got to watch an ad now. Oh, <laughs> but as soon as this ad is over and you watch it again, you're going to regret what you just said. The footage played twice, by the way, the first time around. So I've already seen it two times. I really times. feel like a third time is the charm. I mean, look, at, at most, this thing kind of looks like a panther. Like uh, a, a, yeah, a big cat. Exactly! At a push! As in one of the largest predators on planet Earth? Uh, I think you'll find man is the largest predator on Earth. I'm pretty sure panther is bigger than man, even. <laughs> yeah, f*** you. That did work. <laughs> because... And on fourth viewing, <laughs> you will think it is the Lord come back to life. It is a blood-curdling, <laughs> fearsome beast. Uh, I watch it one more time. That's a Decepticon. That is a 20-foot robot lord. Starscream? <laughs> <laughs> I am sweating bullets, by the way. I think you have a fever. <laughs> we need I to, do have a fever. To bring this up I right never now. denied I had a fever. This is maybe the worst condition we've ever did the, done the podcast in. It is 
so hot in this room. You were up all night with a fever and you were clearly very sick. And I'm not <laughs> sick. I'm getting side effects from the Bill Gates virus vaccine. And I was out till 4 a.m. last night drinking in someone's garden. I didn't mention this. There are, and I don't know why this is relevant, but they say the, the garden was haunted because there's nine cats buried in it. So I'm cursed. You're sick. A cat cemetery. And it's very hot. Yeah. Yeah. We got to wrap this thing up. There's a lot going on. Emotions are running high, clearly. Uh, I'm glad you landed on Panther because I think, and I think you've seen it now, when you watch that video, it moves exactly like a panther. It does. It's, like it's a got big, a long tail. It's got as the well. slinky shoulders and the big tail. So the Marines have retreated. The problem wasn't solved though, and it was only getting worse. Livestock continued to be killed by the dozen, and the beast was not getting cocky. It started to be spotted in other locations. Fishermen hanging out in the nearby river said they saw something the size of a bear, seven feet long, fishing with its massive paws before running off. It started moving closer and closer to the town. Soon pets started going missing, cats and dogs vanishing overnight. And if the owners even caught a glimpse of what happened, all they saw was a giant beast leaping over their six foot fence in one go into the pitch black of night. Whoa. At this point, the locals are getting a good picture of this thing. Many were describing it as a huge panther-like creature, seven plus feet long with a powerful body and black all over. Definitely nothing like any native animal of the UK. We're really doubling down now on the panther idea. Because before it was like, kind of moves like a man. It can shift <laughs> in and out of different dimensions. <laughs> now it's kind of like, we've, a couple of people have seen a big cat. It was pawing at fish down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> Interdimensional <laughs> fish. Maybe there ain't fish in the other dimension. He's got a taste for sashimi. He caught a megalodon, a prehistoric <laughs> shark, and brought it to Exeter. The Ministry of Defense did continue to study this case until sometime in the 90s, where it said they decided the beast was either a hoax or a myth, and that all the sightings up to that point were a misidentification of regular animals that live in the Devon area. But how can that be, Rory? The UK's largest predator is a fox. And man, as we said. How can a seven foot beast leaping over fences be misidentified as a fox? Yeah, that's a really good point. I, look, you're talking to a guy who, I don't wanna go into details here, but also saw a creature leap over a seven foot fence in seemingly one bound. So, and, and, and I have been um, ridiculed for years about it. So uh, I appreciate where these people's come from and they suffered from it directly. Imagine people being like, yeah, I actually don't think it exists. And it's like, well, I lost 20,000 sheep last year. Yeah. It's just been, it's just a field of carcasses and bones. So how dare you tell me that this thing doesn't exist? Yeah. It seems like the Marines just sauntered in, blew their sniper budget for the next three years, and then said, actually, nothing was there. <laughs> Luckily for the military, the sightings did start to subside and killings of farm animals gradually went back to normal levels, meaning most people were happy to accept that the beast really was just a myth. To this day, the beast is kind of an unofficial mascot of the area. For example, I would love to try this local beer called the Exmoor Beast, a 6.6% uh, dark ale. Wow, that's intense. Just showing Rory the bottle art. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But I don't think this is exactly the end of the story because the Beast of Exmoor kind of fits into a bigger picture here in the UK. Big cat sightings in the UK are on the increase. Some areas are now called panther hotspots. Uh, that ain't no normal cat. Jesus, that must be that must be huge. <laughs> Bright green eyes and it flew. It absolutely sped off into the darkness. I entered the heathland just before it got dark, and lo and behold, the crow started giving alarm calls. So I waited and looked, and there it was. Um, a long, low, large, jet black animal emerged from the bushes. 
Rory, have you heard of this phenomenon? Big cats in the UK? We've had this emailed in uh, a number of times by people to tell us to investigate. Um, and I haven't really looked it in, into it myself, but I have heard that it is a thing. These uh, cats that don't belong in these parts of the world uh, just appearing, killing livestock, terrorizing towns. Yeah, I would love to know if this is uh, an all over the UK thing or uh, in specific parts. It's a weird little memory nugget, even in my mind, that living in Northern Ireland growing up, I never really thought about it ever, but it was very, very common to like every six months to a year, someone would be like, yeah, there's a tiger on the loose in County Down. Yeah, or a panther. And like, you really didn't blink hearing that news, but it was always in the papers. It was always in the local press, farmers all over the country claiming they've seen lions, tigers, panthers, all of the above. Yeah. Someone should really look into the zoos in Northern Ireland, I think. And the Beast of Exmoor is only one of a laundry list of potentially paranormal cryptids. To name just a few, there's the Beast of Cumbria, the Hull Hellcat, the Buried Beast, the Wildcat of Wakefield, the Pershore Panther, the oh, Wildcat of Warwickshire. You're giving away weeks of content here, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> to be clear... Today, we aren't deciding on whether British big cats are paranormal. I just wanted to focus on the Beast of Exmoor because I think its story is unique. I'm pretty sure the British military didn't go to war with any of these other ones. Right. And I'd love to do another episode looking at all the other big cat cryptids of the UK. But for today, let's focus on the Beast of Exmoor. Okay. There's a ton of possibilities for what this thing is, if anything. So we've got to decide if it's paranormal or not. Rory. We've got some photographic evidence, some better than others, a short video, tons of eyewitness testimonies, and even some government and military investigation. But they never brought this thing in in handcuffs. What does it make you think? Makes me think that they f***ed up big time. They went straight to full force, and what they should have done was use the knowledge that this is a big cat to their advantage. You know? Put out a little saucer full of milk. Get a little ball of yarn. Maybe some toys. Get a laser pit. They should have used the lasers on the snipers on their red dot sights to get them to like chase it up a tree and then down into a little cage. You could have used its cat-like instinct against it. That would have been smart. Dressed up as a sexy cat. Oh, well, well, yeah, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> Put on cat ears, get down your hands and knees and whoa, whoa, whoa. That's really interesting. If You're saying if they had latched on to the fact this was a big cat earlier they might have had a better chance at bringing this uh, sick puppy in. Yeah, the sick kitten. Um, at the very least, if you wanted to deal with it, bring in a paranormal dog <laughs> to hunt it. Sure, then, of course, you have to deal with the dog at some point. Yeah, at least put, put a tracking chip on the thing so it doesn't get loose. Or like uh, uh, Escape from New York, you put a bomb in the dog's head so that as soon as it kills the big cat... Mission complete. <gasps> Detonate it and you fi you're fine. Everyone can go back to normal. <laughs> and what do you think here about the elephant in the room that we have... There's an elephant now? Identified. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the sniper bullets are just pinging off this thing. <laughs> it's rampaging through the town. Interdimensional elephant. <laughs> my God. The, the elephant in the room is that this thing may well be a big cat. Sure. The problem is big cats don't exist in the UK outside of zoos. Sure. And if they did get out of zoos, they wouldn't last very long. And their bodies would turn up eventually. Uh, they certainly wouldn't be able to breed and multiply. So how do we explain this? Is it truly a big cat that's come from somewhere? Is it an interdimensional big cat? Is it some other type of cryptid that just looks a lot like a big cat? I think uh, the problem with this one is this creature aside from it allegedly slipping into another dimension, hasn't really done anything paranormal. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't even like appear in two places at once or travel some crazy distance. They've been pretty much able to track its movements and the location that it's in. It kind of evaded snipers who didn't seem like they were that good at sniping. Yeah, it's kind of just behaved like a regular Oh, don't animal. talk shit about Wilson because he, his bones were licked clean. I forgot about and he that. he died for the cause. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing here that's like screams paranormal. Abnormal, sure, but not paranormal. Hmm, that's very true. 
and certainly the photographic evidence was inconclusive at best. Yeah. We're really lacking a sense of scale in those images and videos. Yeah, it's a little disappointing. Why is it always, it's always the same animals that get the paranormal treatment, you know? It's always like cats, dogs, maybe a goat, and <laughs> once a donkey. Right, never an aardvark. Yeah. Never a squirrel. <laughs> I want to, yeah, I want people to hunt a paranormal armadillo. Yeah. I want, I want someone to be chasing after a ghost ostrich. Never a dolphin. Yeah. That would have been, that's way more fun, but it never happened. You don't see it happen. I wonder what it is. Maybe it's because these creatures that do exist as predators in the world, like foxes and wolves, a lot of the times they're the ones that are actually doing the killing. So that's why a lot of the cryptids are wolf-like claws, you know, resemble the predators that exist in the real world. It's true. I guess, you know, they have an it's impact. It's not like a farmer is going to be like, a fucking bottlenose jumped my electric fence and ripped the throat out of all my sheep. He's not going to notice a paranormal field mouse. No, just nibbling on the ankles of the Interdimensionally <laughs> slipping in and out of his field. We do have the responsibility, nay, the privilege at the end of every episode to decide if our case is paranormal. Rory, what are you saying today about the Beast of Exmoor? Uh, I'm going to say no, not paranormal. I think there's too many logical explanations as to what this thing could be, and we don't have enough evidence, unfortunately, uh, to uh, say it is paranormal. It's a double no. It was oh. close, though. It was close. Oh. Have, you ever seen, um, have you ever seen The Rescuers or The Rescuers Down Under? cartoon children's cartoon movie i think so jog my memory uh it's basically a team of mice and they go I around the world have. Uh, have. helping people i just wanted to make sure that i was thinking about mice and that the was right, right. you weren't going to say it was a documentary about paramedics <laughs> no yeah in australia uh, I like the idea of uh, creatures getting involved to solve the issues that other creatures are causing. Um, <laughs> so I wish there was almost like a pair of cats that had to like show up and deal with this cat. You know, it's like their jurisdiction. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's like, we're not involved. You need like the cat detectives and the right. cat police to come up and deal with this cat that's going kind of nuts. Well, the problem is that the dog police have been pretty lousy about keeping on top of a uh, dog crime, dog on dog crime. The beast actually ate a lot of the mice detectives. Uh, we had to stop sending them in. It was like <laughs> just <laughs> snacks for them. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this investigation into the beast of Exmoor. I don't know. Maybe you've seen this damn thing yourself. Uh, if so, let us know at the usual places. This paranormal life podcast at gmail.com. Or just hit us up on social media, all of the links to which are in the description of this podcast. Did you know, Rory, that there is another dimension that our listeners can slip into? Simply by going to patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life, they can what? slip into an alternate dimension where Kit and Rory recorded 45 more episodes of this paranormal life. Oh my god, how do they get there? How does a portal open? <laughs> is it an old spell book by simply do putting I have to kill a wizard five earth dimension dollars into patreon oh you can get access to all of it so wait, 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 sorry it wasn't the wizard it wasn't killing the wizard no no what wizard oh jeez, i should have clarified before i shouldn't have gone this far so right okay um all right. Uh, is is there? Do I get anything for the for for the wizard's blood, for, of Patreon? I've killed the wizard. I want to be clear on that what? now. I wizard? already killed him. <laughs> the wizard, man. The guy. I, I thought that was the whole point. You. I thought you were like. There's another dimension where we've done a bunch of stuff. Yep. And you can get access to the dimension. Yep. By slitting the wizard's throat no and one drinking said the. That. Okay. No one said that. All right, I jumped the I jumped the ship here. I shouldn't have done that so so quickly because he was trying to tell me he was like, no. I think you should. You only need money. I and think I was you should like, stop. Shut it, you little. F it sounds right. like you murdered a customer service rep from Patreon. Is that who that was? It sounds like he might have talked like a wizard, and that was why you well, thought. Yeah, and the glasses too. He's the. <laughs> Harry Potter glasses. What was his last words you said? Stop, you don't need any money. He was saying that you don't need to 
kill anyone to access anything in the world. How unfortunate the <laughs> the Sorry, guy okay. that sounded like that happened to meet the one guy who was trying to kill a wizard that day. That's exactly what he sounded like. When I phoned up, he was like, hello, can I help you with anything? And you were like, send me your location right now. <laughs> I'm coming for you. You better grab your wand, asshole. All right, so Rory's not going to be out of jail much longer. Um, you don't need to kill anybody. You can just go on the website, apparently. F*** me, right? I shouldn't have... Right, okay. The, the other dimension thing, that was just... I wasn't even... That was like a little joke. It's not... There wasn't even a real dimension. I it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Uh, cool. Is there some dimension that I can go to to, like, reverse the flow of time, Absolutely possibly? Not. Absolutely or, not. Metaphorically, you can pay for your crimes by going to the dimension of jail. Is, <laughs> is there some sort of dimension in which one could offload a corpse and slip back into okay. his own? Stop talking. All right. Stop okay. talking right now because... Could you uh, just hold this dagger for a second? Make sure you get your fingerprints <laughs> all good over it. Would you mind just checking the weight of this? I feel like the weight is off of my dagger. As soon as you grab it, that's him, officer! <laughs> the man who killed the wizard! In a twist. They all applaud. He was really a wizard? Congratulations, sir. You killed America's most wanted wizard. <laughs> what? No, it was really me. <laughs> he was the head of ISIS and causing climate change. <laughs> this is so f There's a parade through downtown. Kit, kid, kid, kid. I've got the wizard's blood all <laughs> over my face. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life. The link is in the description. You just, don't have to kill anyone. Just swipe up. <laughs> That's the catchphrase. That's the slogan. You don't have to kill anyone. There's lots of other ways you can uh, get more of This Paranormal Life and support the show. Patreon.com. You can check out our merch store, thisparanormallife.com. Follow us on social media. Keep up to date with what's going on. Links are in the description below. So many ways to connect with all things This Paranormal Life. We currently also possess a surplus of wizard's blood. So if you would like a vial sent to your home Rory, or work. Rory has a surplus. Let I me have know. exactly the amount I need, which is zero. <laughs> let, let me know. And I will express deliver a vial of blood to your house. Uh, <laughs> That's him, officer. <laughs> to whoever orders it. <laughs> I need to send out as much blood as possible so I can frame anyone who's close to me as soon as the investigation begins. Friends, we'll be back next week with a brand new paranormal investigation. And until then, remember to live fast, investigate, and die, die young. young. Wizards. <laughs> <laughs>